Hello. Uh, this is going to be a bit of an unusual video for me. I'm a professor of psychology at University of Texas, and I usually talk about psychology, which I'm not going to do today. <laughs> Rather, uh, I'm going to talk about how to pronounce the names of Hungarian musicians. The small Eastern European country of Hungary has been remarkable in producing numerous prominent musicians. Their music is frequently played and discussed, but people have trouble pronouncing the Hungarian names. I thought I would try to help you with that, which might seem ironic because I no longer speak Hungarian, <laughs> but I was born in, and raised in Hungary. And I learned to read Hungarian before my family escaped to the West during the 1956 revolution. Therefore, I can correctly pronounce the letters in a Hungarian name. And I hope at the end of this little lesson, you will be able to do that also. Okay, so let's let her roll. So the first name here is Andras Schiff. Uh, now, Schiff is not a Hungarian name, but Andras is, <laughs> and it illustrates the difference in the sound of an A without an accent versus an A with an accent. So it's Andras, so A is the letter A without an accent, and A, Andras, is the A with an accent. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is Antal Dorati, and this also illustrates the A versus the A. Ah. It's Antal without the accent, Dorati with the accent. He was a prominent conductor. Look at the next one. Is Istvan Kertes. <laughs> this one is kind of a mouthful. It's kind of complicated in a number of uh, dimensions. Uh, yeah, but let's first talk about the E without without an accent versus the E with an accent. It's care, taste. So it's a eh without the accent, a eh with the accent, care, taste. And uh, his this name, incidentally, uh, one reason I include him is I love uh, his performances. He was a really marvelous conductor who uh, died much too early. And uh, so the, uh, this also illustrates the difference between S by itself versus SZ. Notice S by itself appears in his first name, and so it's pronounced as a SH. Istvan. Uh, so there it's S is, is not pronounced as S in English, but it's as a SH, as, as if it were an SH. Uh, whereas uh, in his last name, the S appears with a Z, that's a double letter that's pronounced S. So it's Kertes, and we don't, don't hear the Z, but the, re, the Z changes the S from a SH to a softer S, S, S sound. Okay, let's look at the next one. Geza Anda. So that's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, pianist. Let's look at the next one. Bela Bartok. Uh, this this one people don't have a lot of trouble with. Uh, of course, it's E with an accent, so it makes it an B A La Bartok Tok. Uh, it turns out whether an O has an accent or not, or not doesn't really change the O. It's still pronounced as an O. Um, Bartok, uh, the accent indicates that the uh, emphasis in the uh, word is on the second syllable. But other than that, don't worry about the accent over the O. Bela Bartok. Okay, the next one. George Schulte. Here is the S without the Z. And so it's uh, sh. It's pronounced as if it were SH. George Schulte. Uh, and we'll talk about George in a minute, uh, prominent. And uh, as I understand, a very nice guy, marvelous conductor. And, and uh, people loved play, uh, playing in orchestras with him. Next one 
is George Sell. <laughs> People didn't like playing an orchestra. George Sell, he was a bit of difficult person to deal with. Um, but notice that uh, here the last name in, in Schulte it was S by itself. In Sell, it's the S Z, which uh, is a double letter, and we don't pronounce the Z. And it gives the Z gives the S this soft cell, uh, soft S type sound. Okay, George Sell. Let's look at the next one. Uh, nobody ever pronounces this one incorrectly, probably because <laughs> it comes up a lot. It's Franz Liszt. Uh, again, the S becomes soft because it's uh, in combination with the Z, which is un not pronounced. And the next one is Miklos Roja. Now here, the S and the Z are in the opposite order, so Z comes first. And if Z comes first, then it's a Z sound. So it's Miklos Roja. Zh. Z is the ZS is Z. <laughs> Miklos Roja was a prominent composer and worked a lot in Hollywood and film scores and so on. Miklos Roja. Okay, next one. So here we again have the Z ZS combination uh, that we saw so is Miklos Roja. But we have another combination, NY. And the NY is a double word uh, where you don't pronounce the Y and you don't pronounce the N. <laughs> the combination is, is Ny, <laughs> which is a sound that, you know, is not common and is not familiar to people who listen to English. Uh, and it's one of the reasons NY combinations of English speakers have a lot of trouble with. So this is Zoltan Rojnai, Rojnai. Okay, A I is I E. It's uh, Nya is comes before the I E. Roj Nya E. <laughs> okay, let's look at another one. Okay, Zoltan Kodai. Okay, here the double letter is an L Y, and uh, just like in uh, in the S Z combination, we don't hear the second letter. And in the NY combination, we don't hear the second letter. In the LY combination, we also don't hear the second letter, but the two together make a Y sound. So this is Zoltan Kodai, end of sound. Uh, I have, uh, people have a lot of trouble with Kodai. I don't know why. Um, well, <laughs> they often, uh, at one version of it is Kodali or Kodai. Well, even if you get the your part, there is no E at the end. Uh, it's Kodai. Okay. How about another one? Uh, this is another famous Hungarian musician. No, not really. <laughs> this is me in my uh, uh, Hungarian spelling of my name. And um, English version is Michael. In Hungarian, it's Mihai. So the L-Y again is like Kodai. It's Mihai. And uh, last name is Domian. All right, next one. This is Ferenc Fritschai. And this illustrates another double letter, CS. So the F CS is pronounced as CH, <laughs> which is another one of these strange, strange sounds unfamiliar to English. Uh, C by itself, Ferenc, that's, that's like it might be in English. But if the C is followed by an S, it becomes a CH. So it's Ferenc Fritschai. Fritschai. Okay. How about the next one? Uh, this one is Yeno, his first name, to illustrate difference between an O uh, without an umlaut and an O with an umlaut. O is an O without an umlaut. <laughs> if you put two dots on it, it becomes O. So it's Yeno, and this is Tokach. So the CH is a CH sound, Tokach. Yeno Tokach is a composer who is the namesake of the Tokach Quartet, string quartet that uh, has a home base at University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. And the Tokach Quartet was started and has been running for many decades. Uh, it was started by four uh, Hungarian uh, uh, musicians uh, and gradually 
the Hungarians retired. I think there's only one Hungarian left, um, but they kept the name Takac. How about the next one? So uh, this is uh, another name that illustrates the NY combination, uh, but here the NY combination is followed by an I. So we don't hear the Y here, but we do hear the I. So this is Ernst von Dochnanyi. So here we, it's Nanyi uh, because of the I, not because of the Y. Okay, let's look at one more. And this is George Ligeti. Uh, Ligeti is not problematic, but George is. The G-Y is another one of these sounds that you don't have in English. It's a J sound. And uh, you got two of them here, George. Uh, and George is Hungarian for George. <laughs> and you can appreciate why George Scholte and George Sell and didn't uh, uh, use the Hungarian version of their first names because George is a lot more difficult to pronounce than George. This is George Ligeti. Okay, next one. Okay, this one is George Kurtag. And this is actually an, uh, a useful uh, uh, example because it, it differentiates the hard G from the GY. The hard G at the end is pronounced as G, uh, G sound, Kurtag, uh, and that's not unfamiliar. It's the G-Y that's unfamiliar, George Kurtag. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a bit of a review. So we, we got uh, the accents, A versus A, ah. E versus A, O versus O, of course, O versus U with the two dots, U versus U with the umlaut, and then these double letters, cell for SC, J, Roja for uh, uh, ZS, LY, Kodai, CS, Tokach, G-Y, George, and N-Y, Dochnanyi. Okie doke. Well, uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, I hope uh, you found some of this to be useful and that you'll have a better shot at <laughs> tackling Hungarian names, uh, having uh, listened to this lesson. Uh, good luck with the pesky double letters. And uh, happy listening to Hungarian music and Hungarian musicians. Take care, folks.